Anyway, <clears throat> I'm from different part of the business of IBM actually. Not from the I don't know which part of business I need. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from collaboration, we're supposed to collaborate. So the things that I'm doing is uh, the things that were, uh, Stefan was doing before joining this team. Uh, it's portals, uh, uh, social networks, and uh, this kind of things. Oh, the boring so, stuff. Yeah, the boring stuff. That's why I'm doing this on my free time mainly. <coughs> At w and what I'm going to show you today is my small project that I was doing like for, for the last last year probably um, and th that's an air quality sensor um, the reason why I start uh, start this project is because I've got this small air quality uh, sensor which is VOC sensor uh, volatile organic compounds and uh, Roland probably could say about this much more than I do um, and I've got it from one uh, crazy German, uh, not this one, another one. <laughs> um, he just uh, pinged me all on, a, on the same time, which is our instant messaging um, platform, mm -hmm. and he said, do you want it? And I said, why not? And he just sent it to me. So I uh, plugged it in and started playing around, um, created a small app uh, on Android, and that's using Cordova. Um, so there, there is a custom plugin to talk to the sensor, custom plugin to uh, send MQTT messages um, and uh, detect the location. And uh, now if I, uh, if the value of uh, the sensor is changing, then uh, beyond this, uh, some, uh, some certain thresholds, the uh, device sends the data into the centralized system. And that's what, what <coughs> that's, that's the software that we sell for crazy money called Intelligent Operations Center. But all it does, it receives the data from whatever, whatever sensor or whatever device it is, and then plots it onto the map, and then allows to analyze it in many different main, uh, ways. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just send the message from my device, and then after some time, it should appear on the map somewhere ah, I hope I'm still connected oh. ah, here it is so that's that's the message VOC is around 450 that's my lower threshold so the air quality here is pretty good um, so what what is happening actually at the back end I'm uh, using um, IoT foundation so that's my app and you've probably seen it the, 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 the thing that um, Stefan just showed that's uh, Node-RED run on Node.js, uh, Internet of Things Foundation. Uh, Cloud, I'm, I'm not using it, but it's still there, so that's okay. Uh, my device is connected to the uh, I I Internet of Things because I'm not using the boilerplate, it's all custom built. So I have to register my device before I, I will start sending the uh, information. Um, you know about doing that? Hmm? How do you register your device? Oh, that's quite easy. Like. Uh, I can use the user interface to add the device, and that's just like this. D device. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's always happening when you do the live demos. Right? <laughs> uh, um, and uh, we have an API. So the API key we can use to register the device programmatically. So if you want <coughs> to do uh, device registration over your own user interface, um, then you can build uh, something like a custom layer between your app and, or your device and um, IoT Foundation uh, that will uh, do this registration for you using our API. Now, once the device is registered, and uh, um, I know that there are some pre-configured um, pre uh, queues that I can use to send my data uh, or to send the uh, basically we have we can have different queues for sending the data, sending the control messages, uh, and uh, basically separate the information that is going to and from the the devices depending on what kind of information is is going back and forth. Um, and I can share these API keys with my development team, so they all can can use the same instances and uh, develop the applications with the same. Um, IoT Foundation stuff. Uh, that's the API. Just, just quickly show you that, that there is, there is, there is some API. <laughs> um, 
Now, what I'm doing here, um, after I receive the data in uh, IBM IoT, and it's connected as a service to my um, um, application, that's why I can just pick it from the drop-down list. Uh, all, it does all the configuration, all the API keys, everything for me. Then uh, it's it, that's basically um, the input type is the queue that I'm using to read the data, um, event, command, status, etc. And then uh, just to make it easy, I'm uh, filtering. I'm just receiving everything, all the devices, um, all, all the events, all the formats, everything. Um, so once I receive the data, I need to transform it from uh, the uh, the uh, format that uh, I'm getting from the from my app into the format that this Internet of uh, sorry uh, to the format that um, Intelligent Operations Center understands, and that sounds also JSON. And I'm using this mustache template to do that. Uh, after so for people who don't know, what is this mustache? Oh, that's so basically it's, it's quite easy. Okay. So that's um, um, okay. Just to a couple of words so about it. Payload, yeah. So. so convert the payload and the yeah, I'm receiving the, uh, <coughs> like the my message is coming as the JSON object, and that's M star, uh, it's MSG basically dot something, and there is um, uh, things like dot device, and uh, in this case it's dot payload. That's, that's the payload that I'm actually receiving, in addition to the metadata, and then I can uh, use the. Um, um, attributes or how it's called the, the properties from from the from the JSON uh, to and map it to uh, another JSON format. So this this format like start date time location name etc. This is the format that I am using in uh, Intelligent Operations Center, and that's time longitude latitude name and VOC. If that's something that is coming from my device. So I'm basically mapping them together. Um, after that, I need to add some HTTP headers and basically say that I'm going to send JSON and do the uh, uh, post call to my uh, Intelligent Operations Center data source. And I'm using a login and password here in this case. And that's basically it. So if I look at the debug, that's the message that I just sent. Uh, it has much more than just the, uh, so that's, that's the payload is here. And this is the thing that was uh, sent to uh, the Intelligent Operations Center. And the rest, the topic that I'm using, the device ID, that's the one that is registered, uh, and many, many other things like device type and et cetera, et cetera. That's, everything is available to me in a debug mode here. LTP token is the one that is used for single sign. So this is um, just what I wanted to show. and. Um, I should say that I spend much more time on developing the app rather than connecting all these pieces together. So connecting pieces together took me maybe um, one day, <laughs> and developing the app took me a couple of months. So that's kind of something something that. Um, what do you mean developing the app? Which app is it? that one? This one, the one that is running on the device. Because there are uh, custom plugins for Cordova here to talk to the device. And then uh, MQTT, we have samples again um, with the Cordova um, plugins on how to how to use that one. Um, there's a whole tutorial available on the internet. But I, I was quite new to the mobile development as well, so that's why I spent so much time on it. Must you sh develop an app just to visualize the data you've collected? Yeah. Because Stefan mentioned something you can do it in the web browser. Uh, there's still an application and the web browsers show pixels you have to decide how the pixels look like so you you will you will find a lot of like say ready-made libraries for graphic analysis like say my, my little favorite is d3js but you still have to make an, uh, you, you still have to connect the dots so, uh, still I need a developer to go and make that web browsing look if, if you have specific ideas how you want it to look, yes. Yeah. There's of course there's a lot of standard packages available that uh, that do all sorts of graphics and pie charts and bar charts. But once one. once you get specific in what you want, yeah. you will then want to entertain a, a developer. All right. And like say, as I said, my my personal favorite is the D3JS. Is in, in my opinion one of the most sophisticated visualization libraries we have.
besides many eyes, of course. <laughs> yes. yes. You mentioned MQTT. Yes. Um, uh, that, that's being used between the app to the server at the back end. Yes. So how do you handle security on the MQTT? Because I understand MQTT is really... Uh, Yes, it's uh, basically yeah, how do you, um, you provide login and password uh, and um, al along the, with the other kind of configurations, just uh, bring up again to tell you what kind of settings I have. So to configure the MQTT, I'm using first uh, the message topic where I'm sending the messages to, yeah. the server name, the client identifier that I'm getting once I, I'm registered on the device, and then username is standard and the password is generated for me when I'm registered the device. So this, uh, uh, like uh, the cl client identifier and the password can be uh, something to it. And it's is, is the message that being sent encrypted? It can be encrypted as well, if you want to. Like I mean, I assume you're using an SSL key for the run. Yeah. I'm the, currently in my in my project. I'm not. I don't <laughs> care about security. So you, know? you send the, <laughs> yeah. so the clear text passwords, right? So yeah. that's that's. Uh, Basically, it's a it's no, no, no. MQTT it's, itself is a binary protocol. Okay. So that's not. Uh, it's not a, like. Oh, so it is a, okay. It's not a reverse code. No. no. It's binary clear text. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the binary clear text. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the project, the backend, the working cool. group. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is basically. This blue, my Bluemix here, that's running on the I, IBM Bluemix. Yes. And that's basically sending that to the back end, and that back end do all the graphics. That yes, so th this, this uh, uh, post is actually post to this system. Yeah, yeah. Right, and this system is running also on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and not on Bluemix at all, it's, yeah, uh, it's somewhere is, else. And that's again to the question with the can we call the API from somewhere else? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing here. Well. So if I have a few Raspberry Pi, not, not 17, but a few Raspberry Pi, and I want to actually try something like this, uh, what what is the the level at which I start to have to pay or? Oh, ah, oh pricing. Pricing. <laughs> pricing. Yeah. Um, Chicky. <laughs> Uh, Stefan, do you want to talk about pricing? I'm an engineer, I don't talk money. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to quote hey, my at wife. At least engineer honest with prices. <laughs> okay, I'm, 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 I'm also an engineer, so I'll be honest with the prices then. <laughs> Alright? Uh, <laughs> Just, just, in, just to quote my wife from last Monday, hey, Daddy, if you wonder where your, all your money is, I took it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so pricing wise, um, how much does it cost from the Bluemix side to actually do this? Just from Bluemix, how much did it cost you? For me, you have to pay for anything? No, didn't. Nothing. nothing. So, so um, for basic uh, development work, so say for example, like doing the node grade and everything, right? Um, the free tier is five one two meg of RAM for thirty days, and uh, to run to run a node grade instance. In fact, you don't need 512 meg of RAM. You, uh, the minimum you can actually go for Node.js, uh, Node for a Node Red instance. I think to run it really smoothly, um, 128 meg of RAM is more than enough. So you multiply that by five, you can get about five instances. And each, each instance, to, just to give you a rough idea, what does 512 meg of RAM is, gives you, right? So 512 meg of RAM will give you about 600 to a thousand requests per second okay on a node.js right so per second we're talking about per second of, of requests uh, which is actually quite a lot right for the free tier um, and then when we talk about the different stuff right so that's on the instance only right then you have the services right the services are also paid service <coughs> so for cloud and no sql database and the, and the reason why we, we, we would always recommend no cloud and no sql is because it gives up to 20 gig of storage for free <coughs> and if i'm not wrong um stefan how many api calls um 100,000 writes 500,000 reads yeah about there and then right? a, a, thousand, a thousand extra calls are three cents yeah so it's, it's really cheap, right? Three cents for a thousand extra calls, right? So for the database itself, it's really cheap. 
Um, the one that's not really cheap, uh, in my opinion and, and uh, several people's opinion also, which is the Internet of Things uh, um, APIs or the service itself. So if you can go to the catalog. The es estimate you can straight away go. Go to the catalog. Uh, go to the uh, right at the bottom to the IoT. There we go. Click on the IoT. So the price scroll down. Mm -hmm. The pricing here. So it's it. These are the pricing. So it's about twenty active devices, hundred meg, uh, hundred meg of data traffic, one gig of storage. This is the free tier, and then after that, it's it's you know you have to pay. So. The 100 meg of data traffic, right? It, I've asked quite a few people uh, for Internet of Things. This one is actually going to be um, quite the limiting factor. And that's the reason why, on the flip side again, we, we would recommend, right, that you cleanse your data first, right? You cleanse your data first, uh, say with a Raspberry Pi or something else, right? You cleanse your data with Node Red uh, running locally on a Raspberry Pi or wherever it is. Cleanse the data before bringing it to the IoT Foundation, right? So that where every every data transfer you're doing is in the KBs, right? So 100 meg divide by in the KBs, you pretty much get uh, um, what I mean. Like you you should be able to get sufficient enough uh, instance uh, rather usage uh, for the free part. So to answer your question, tw up to 20 devices, active devices, and we, when we say active devices, it's active. What does that mean? You can actually deactivate your devices. So you can, you can do a round robin kind of... Uh, uh, of uh, 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 <laughs> How fast can you deactivate the devices? I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> I don't want to say it publicly. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. how, how are these devices identified? Is it that device ah, yeah, yeah. identity... That he showed us yes, earlier, yes, yes. Yeah. The, Mac, mm -hmm. the Mac address. Yes, correct. So, so if I have one Raspberry Pi and here. twenty sensors of Bluetooth, I have twenty Bluetooth Mac addresses. No, no, no. No, right? It's no, no. From the it's just yeah. whatever it's just from the Pi itself <laughs> transferring out. So no, no, no. Okay, and that's why that's why I say right. Yeah. It's it's better if you have a lot of sensors. Yeah. You collate it into one central device. Okay. Before going there, All right. that's how it, how it, I would recommend. Do you think right? Give, give or take, there's a pricing problem. Typically, this same sensor versus host thing comes up all the time in IoT type frameworks. And if you don't have a pricing constraint, you usually do it on a fate sharing basis. If all the sensors fate share, if yeah. they all go away together, or they all come up together, then treat it as one device. If okay. they don't fate share, then you treat it as one device. Uh, in this case, however, you might want to put a concentrator in, despite yeah. the fact that the concentrator might lose yep. communication with two of the devices, because you run up against a ridiculous pricing problem. Yeah, and then also at the same, uh, also at the same time, right? It's uh, your your problem of uh, intermittent internet ah. also. So you need to have an intermediary storage. Yes. Right, which, like I said, as 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 I said, so it it, it doesn't matter for you because you are going to have an intermediary storage anyways eventually. Right, so you can do all your uh, all your processing there, data cleansing before even going up to the IoT Foundation platform. I can work around with you for the <coughs> free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing is when you have a load of concentrator, like say, nobody stops you. If that one go, does a HTTP post, yes, you bypass the IoT Foundation exactly. completely. Or you use a use a um, cloud and database or um, CouchDB and synchronize with the CouchDB, so there is no more IBM IoT cloud uh, cloud involved. The IBM IoT cloud becomes interesting the very moment as you have all these specialized devices and you use the libraries IBM provides to connect them. But like I say, um, on the geek la on the geek layer, I think we are right now in that. Uh, <laughs> You can straight away use uh, yep. a standard H, uh, uh, <coughs> internet protocol to directly hit Bluemix under uh, without the um, the IoT cloud mm. Mm. and then save yourself the money. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we're using the cloud yep. synchronization. Either yeah. using yeah. the cloud and synchronization so or NQ. The, the yeah. example yeah. I used with the Twine that was hitting that Bluemix directly. There was no IoT in with uh, the simulated temperature device that used the IoT cloud. So. You've seen both. And, and I've also feedback 
to the <laughs> the IoT guys or so that the pricing is really slightly off. Slightly <laughs> off. Slightly <laughs> off the realistic part of it. Unappealing. Yeah, yeah unappealing, exactly. So so I've really feedback on that and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what comes up in the next few months. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm just a small fry in IBM. I, I have no power. <laughs> a any other questions? No? Alright. So, there is a call to action, obviously. Right? So after looking at all of this and you're interested in it, can I use your computer? Just text file. Text file would do. Text file? Yeah, notepad. Okay. Or your favorite editor, or Sublime, or Atom, or Notepad Plus <laughs> Plus, or Vim, <laughs> or anything. <laughs> Emacs. Oh wait, no, 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 not Emacs. I, I'm from the VI and the Vim. Oh come on. <laughs> oh, but Stelman was in Singapore. The guys who coded VI oh. around here. All right. Anyways, um, <laughs> how do we increase the? Uh, so, where is it? Control plus. Zoom. Zoom in, right? Control num pad plus. Ooh, wait. That's right. Okay. Alright, alright. So um basically the URLs are IBM.biz, obviously. Blue Mix SG. Okay? Um so that that's that's the one that you wanna go to to register for Blue Mix. Uh, the Internet of Things, it's, what is it called? Internet of Things dot uh, IBM. De Developer.ibm.com. <laughs> Developer.ibm.com slash IoT. IoT, correct? Yeah. All right. So that's that's the IoT stuff. And, and node-red.org. Node-red.org. So that's the note rate stuff. MQTT.org. <laughs> <laughs> More? Okay. MQTT.org. Is, is Note Red an IBM thing? Uh, it's, uh, we, we just mentioned Note Red is from IBM Research. So, so we open sourced it. Apache. Apache. Apache? Yeah. All right. All right. The I other. Th they made the lawyers drunk to get away with it. Yeah, I have no idea how they did that. Right. Uh, the other one that you want is probably my email address. If you have any queries or anything like that, it's just very simple. Justin Lee. dot sg. dot ibm. dot com. Right. Simple enough. Um, and if you have any questions in terms from startups, as a startup, as a, we we have our startup programs and whatnot. So if you have any other questions about that, you can either email me. Or go to yes http slash slash ibm dot biz slash g e p c s s no four c s s g there we go what that's your identity yeah why sorry it stands for global entrepreneurship program for cloud startups Singapore ah so obvious so obvious. I'm not going to write the entire thing down, you know, like Global Entrepreneurship Program for Cloud Startup Singapore, right? A mind map for that. Huh? A mind map. A mind map, exactly. All right, so what are the links? What are the links do we have? Oh, meetup.com. So if you didn't register for meetup, uh, just go to meetup.com slash bluemixsg. So we're having, a lot of, uh, we're having a lot of workshops over the next few weeks. Uh, do check it out. And we're having a lot of events. Uh, for the next few weeks or so. And also, at the same time, in the Blue Mix SG Meetup uh, page, if you, you want to share anything, you know, I don't have to always be IBM, because initially now, you know, nobody uses Blue Mix, so I have to use IBM people. <laughs> but eventually, if you guys have anything you want to share, let me know, send me an email, or post in the meetup.com. Uh, and then uh, let me know if you want to share anything. I'll put it up, up there. It's a community. It's a Blue Mix community. So it, it's open for you guys to share whatever you want. All right. We are looking. This is the first Blue Mix Meetup Singapore uh, community group, meetup group. We are going to we're going to target every last Thursday of the month. All right. Every last Thursday of the month to meet up. And the next one, I don't know. Like, I temporarily put it at um, 
as a uh, mobile, something to do with Bluemix and mobile. But uh, if any of you guys, after seeing the introduction by Stefan of all the different services, is there anything specific that you want to see? Anything? Oh, let, let, wait, wait. In order to let, remind you again what it means, here's the list. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, what can Watson do? What can Watson? That's that's actually uh, a. What can't Watson do? Google. <laughs> okay, let's let's go. Google personality analysis. It has to be. Oh, yeah. You wanna you Watson wanna show that do, that demo? Analysis. All right. Or we, we can we can keep it for the next meetup, right? Well, show next meetup. demo dot um, my blue mix. I've memorized this URL already because everyone is looking at this. So. Maybe for the next meetup, I don't know. If you guys want to do, you want you want to see Watson, or if you want to you see the mobile services, uh, I haven't decided yet. So if more people want to see Watson, I'll I'll do Watson. So this is the personality insight. Something something small teaser, right? So I can actually get a bunch of text. Doesn't matter where the text is. It can be from Facebook, blogs, Twitter, a reference. It has to be that that person that writes it. Okay, that person that writes it. I can analyze it, pass it to Watson, analyze it. Everything is uh, under uh, REST APIs and uh, and uh, what do you call that? Uh, um, JSON, right? Pass it to Watson, and Watson will be able to give me back uh, its analysis on what your personality or the person who wrote this piece of text personality is. And this is what I get back, right? So I can um, what he did was mentioning about what Najib. Najib's uh, 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 his speech. speech, his speech. So he basically pasted that speech here and analyzed it, yeah. and something so interesting scroll, scroll came back. A little back. bit down, so the summary. All right. Is visible. So there's a summary. And then your choices are driven by. Yes. That was the sentence where everybody in Malaysia started laughing. Was it by a need for attention? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this this is slight, you know, a quick one. So I did a, I did also a quick demo on uh, on Watson so you can actually go to match.mybluemix.net right uh, da -do, da -do, right currently there's only nine Twitter accounts that I'm comparing you with so you can actually just go to let's say I, I match my Twitter account right and I'm able to check okay I am similar to Elon Musk with um, <laughs> And uh, this is this is my personality. So this is a quick demo that I did based on personality insights. All right. All righty. <laughs> I'm quite proud of that. That's why I keep showing that. You know. <laughs> All right. So so that, that those are some of the things. Ah yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes. Uh, one so one last thing. Uh, let me just flash this up again. Okay. All right. So everybody got it. You got all the links. Okay. Do you want me to make it bigger? Please. Please. Uh, I know. I know. I also find it very small. Uh, in. Uh, control mouse scroll up. Ah, uh, this doesn't. No, doesn't last. Yep. I will. I will. I will. This is just for the beginning for you guys. I'll post it on Meetup. Uh, and feel free to post any of your photos on Meetup and uh, suggest events and topics and whatnot because I'm running off ideas. So I want I need you guys to tell me what you wanna you what you wanna see, okay? Um, and with that, let me pass it off to uh, Izad, right? Can it's his laptop. <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. Uh, what's the URL? Uh, the co the co foundry dot com slash uh, fintech challenge. Correct. Right. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we are sponsoring this also. <laughs> yes, and that's why I'm presenting it today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, the past few weeks we have been working on a challenge. Uh, this coming June. So, are uh, we? Uh, interested to go into the fintech industry and all that. So we have been talking to Justin. Justin has been coming down to our office and he have decided to sponsor us $12,000 credit for the first prize winner. Okay, let me just go. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so I just straight away go down to the prices and they have decided to sponsor 12,000 USD of IBM to miss credits. For all three prices. All three prices. Ah, all three prices. Okay. Okay. All two prices. I don't know. Oh, even for run out. Price? Yes. Okay. So even for run out price, they are willing to. And uh, no, I mean not willing. They are going to uh, give you guys twelve thousand USD of IBM to miss credits. So uh, imagine. You first price run out. You're still a winner at IBM. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, we had the overview of the Blue Mix just now. So imagine what twelve thousand USD of IBM Blue Mix credits can do for you. So there's a saying in programming: if you want to learn something, you just need to get your hand dirty. So I would say just come down for the event. If you win first prize or you win second prize. You get the chance to join the TCF PMP FinTech Accelerator Program. PMP is the plug and play <coughs> from Silicon Valley. And uh, you'll be fully funded by uh, both TCF and plug and play to start on your idea. So uh, this is an ideation challenge. So it's not a hackathon challenge. So there's no coding involved. We just want to, you to come down, just brainstorm, mix around with the people in FinTech in Singapore. And just present your ideas at the end of the day. If your idea happens to be the idea that both uh, TCF and PMP are very interested to invest in, they will make you the first prize or the second prize winner. And yeah, so that's about it. So if you guys want to register, just go down to the cofoundry.com FinTech Challenge or just Google FinTech Challenge Singapore. Yeah, it's happening uh, this June. There's actually a lot of fintech challenges, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's a very popular thing. It is a really popular thing. So how many? So what other fintech challenges? Oh, so many. Um, there is a fintech. There's a fintech organization that, uh, I think, two weeks ago they did the DBS blockchain hackathon, right? Which right. we sponsored also. <laughs> <laughs> they are very generous. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what else. There's so many. Uh, um, yeah, there's there's quite a few. So right. Yeah, there's quite a yeah. few of fintech challenges around. Yeah. So uh, this is going to happen on. Let me just take. Actually, I still don't know. Twenty eh. first, <laughs> uh, I think, if I'm not wrong, of June. Is one is one the Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, twenty 20 June. On the Saturday. Yeah. So just. Go down to the website, thecoboundry.com slash fintech challenge and just go to the home page. And you are able to register here. Currently there are already seven teams. Uh, we are planning to hold 20 teams. So there are 13 more slots. Okay, so uh, if you guys have any questions? Yes, no, no? Do you have anything you want to say? I have. Follow pizza left. Please okay. finish. <laughs> really, seriously. Tapa ho, tapa ho. Finish it. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Got a question? No, then go and eat it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.